and welcome back to Nerdy Nerds. Today we are talking about something that I am rather passionate about and also I'm really lost with it. I don't know how to feel and I think you guys know what we're talking about. We are talking about Buzz Lightyear and also Lightyear. There's, there's just something off about it all and I know these films have been out for ages and I know I probably should have spoken about this ages ago but I haven't watched the film until very recently and I I don't know how I feel about it. I had very mixed reviews originally. So people were telling me it was good. More people were telling me it was bad. Um, and I just wanted to make my own opinion. And now I've watched it, I don't know what my opinion fully is. I've got a few things that have groped me. Groped me? Have griped me? They haven't groped me. Um, but I, I also have a few things that I did enjoy. Um, there were elements of the film that I really thought were, were nice. And they were added in very well. Um, but there was just some things that didn't make sense for the the evolution into uh, into Toy Story. And I think that's where I'm struggling. The evolution from Lightyear to Toy to Toy Story, I felt was there was a gap somewhere and it wasn't filled or it was overfilled. And I'll get to that in a second. But let me start off with the things that I did enjoy. I did enjoy the story with his female friend who grew up and had her family and they eventually had the uh, the granddaughter who then came into Buzz's life. That was a cool little story. I enjoyed that. I liked the way they did that. Um, I think the whole element of it could have been done uh, the same way, but without Buzz. So for me, this film was a good film or a decent film, but it wasn't or didn't need to be about Buzz Lightyear. And I think that's where I'm struggling. If you took Buzz Lightyear and the name out of this film, that would have been uh, just a normal space adventure film. And I wouldn't have had a problem with it. But it was Buzz Lightyear. And I think that's where the struggles really come into it. So another thing I enjoyed were the characters. I did enjoy some of the characters. The one played by Taiko Waititi. That was a fun character. A little bit annoying at times. The whole pen situation was was easy to see that that was eventually going to come into to, uh, into use. Sorry, um, But even when it did come into use... I don't know if you noticed, but the thing it was used on wasn't, it didn't need a pen. That <laughs> could have been your hand, could have been anything other than a pen. Um, but they, they eventually got use of the pen. Um, so yeah, there was a few things, the characters, I did enjoy the characters. And I enjoyed Buzz being ruthless. I felt like that was the correct attitude for Buzz. Buzz had his mission and that's it. it no blinkers, he was doing his mission. He didn't, I mean, he did mind that people were dying around him when he was going into leaps of four years or whatever. But he didn't ever stray away from his mission. When things were going wrong, when the, the extra team that he had were a bit annoying, he was more than happy to, to brush him off and go and complete his mission. That, to me, was Buzz Lightyear. Now, there are elements of the character that I think were Buzz Lightyear. I think it's more of the outside of Buzz that I struggled with. Because, for me, the big thing that annoyed me was the suit. And I don't know why they decided to leave the suit so late. But the suit, for me, was the most iconic thing for Buzz Lightyear. For me, it was it was everything that Buzz is. You push the button, his, his helmet come off, he couldn't breathe. I'm outside editing the video right now on my phone, and I realised that I said the button is the, the helmet. The button isn't the helmet, the button's the wings, but another button does the helmet, and he does... He does run out of breath and he starts struggling to breathe, which was never like a little tiny reference in this film, which they could have done that and it would have been quite easy to do, but they never mentioned it. So that was just another thing that I wanted to add into the video. There was like that, that was never, ever a part of this film. And I think there's loads of things that weren't added on or were added on very slightly as like secondary thoughts. For example, the, um, the karate chop that was just used in a montage, a montage. Uh, that was just used in a montage and it didn't feel like that was, you know, it didn't feel like he was always karate chopping guys. I thought he'd have full karate chopping, fighting aliens and stuff. And yeah, it just felt, it felt a bit wrong. I also feel like the, the, the buzz that we got wasn't any point the buzz in Lightyear. Like it is the same sort of character in a sense of he has the arrogance and he has the, the mission that he wants to complete but it didn't feel like it was the beginning of Lightyear or the end of Lightyear. It kind of felt like if he was the, the buzz from the end of Lightyear, he would have been more willing to work with Woody and the other guys a lot quicker and a lot sooner. But the buzz from the beginning of Lightyear didn't have his suit, didn't have, you know, 
I don't know. It just it if it was Buzz from the beginning of Lightyear where he hasn't crash landed yet, kind of fair enough. That's okay. But give him his suit. Give him the original suit that he had, and not the new flashy fancy suit. And that's where I'm struggling. And I know, I know, it's a movie, and movies have toys that all have different suits or different aesthetics or different, you know, uh, what's the word like add-ons or, or accessories. Buzz was never mentioned in any other form. Never ever. It was always new suit Buzz. There was also no mention of a lightsaber thing, a weird lightsaber sword. There was also no mention of a ginger cat. And I think that's one of the big points that I'm trying to make is when it comes to Buzz being a toy and Andy wanting Buzz as a toy, I'm telling you now, Andy would have wanted his lightsaber and Andy would have wanted that cat. That cat was too much of a big and integral part of that movie for him not to have been in Buzz's ship as an accessory later on. And we never see it, we never hear of it. And I know that it is just Pixar trying to add in a character to try and get kids to buy merchandise. Bad, bad Pixar, because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add to the film in the same way that it adds to the toy, because the film then gets impacted hugely by this cat, and the toy doesn't even mention it. So where does the, the disparity lay? The disparity lays with not adding too much to a character that we already know. And that's where you need to just strip it down, have the cat as a background character. The cat could have been just as important, but from a distance. So it was his his, um, his friend's cat that she sent to him to make sure that he was happy. Maybe she should have uh, kept the cat. That would have been good. Maybe she should have kept the cat. It was never Buzz's cat. And then the cat was feeding him information. And then when she eventually dies, he could have then maybe taken the cat and taking the information from the cat, anything. But no, the cat is a massive part of the film. The cat is also more or less Buzz's best mate. So this cat should have been a, a thought later on. I don't know at what point they decided making Lightyear, but usually these films are quite far in advance. And it would have been maybe a good idea to add some of these little additional things into, into Toy Story 4, Toy Story 3. I mean, it probably wouldn't have been ready for Toy Story 3. But I don't know. It just feels like these are afterthoughts that didn't feel like they fit the character of Buzz. And the biggest, the biggest gripe that I've got is Zerg. Who the hell decided Zerg was going to be Buzz? Buzz, inside Zerg's suit, made no sense. They tried to make it make sense, but it made no sense. The little joke that we had, I think, in Toy Story 2, where Zerg was Buzz's dad, that would have been better. We could have had Buzz's dad being Zerg, and then maybe he wasn't happy with him being a space ranger, so he's been chasing him all this time to try and stop him or, or prevent him from being a space ranger and capture him or whatever. That would have been cool. But instead, we had Buzz and Buzz with very much the same motive. And I, I, I know that our Buzz decided that he wanted, to, uh, he wanted to leave it as is, but I agreed with the other Buzz. I agreed with both of them. They both had very good points. Zerg wasn't a bad guy. He was just misunderstood with a plan that wasn't the best plan. So why on earth is Zerg sold to us as this big emperor overlord of horribleness that we never got? It was just basically Thanos. And we all kind of agreed with Thanos. Thanos had a good idea in mind. He was just going to murder half of the population for it. So Zerg was not... Zerg was not it. Zerg sucked for me. And also, why the fuck was Zerg more or less Optimus Prime Zerg and not little robot in a cloak or whatever? What was that about? We always had Zerg in like an, an emperor cloak, little uh, collars and stuff with a cloak. But this Zerg was, A, he was like 10 foot tall. B, he had legs. I don't remember Zerg having legs. He had little wheels, from what I remember. His cloak went all the way down, and then underneath him, he had little wheels. So why the hell did this Zerg go and have two chunky legs running around like a fucking Transformers movie? And then inside was Buzz. A piss take. Absolute piss take. I can't believe it. I don't think you should be able to believe it. Stop believing it. And, yeah, I don't know. There's just too many little bitty tiny things that just... Drug me, drug me, dragged me, dragged me away from the uh, the magic of the movie. And I just feel like if they did a story of Buzz Lightyear, Star Command, he would have had missions. He would have been going out, completing missions, fighting off aliens, 
maybe had a struggle with the mission and then had to get his way back. And, and on the way back, he's got to fight some more. I don't care. I think there should have been more fighting. I think there should have been less being stranded because the whole stranded thing was used in Toy Story and they used it differently. And that's another thing that annoyed me. Why was Buzz in Lightyear monologuing for himself and Buzz from Toy Story monologuing for Star Command? Because in Toy Story, he, he calls for Star Command. Star Command come in. They don't come in. So then he's trapped on an alien planet and he's logging everything that he sees. He's talking to a log to log what is happening so that when he does get home, he has information. This Buzz, everyone was making out like he was just schizophrenic and was trying to just talk to himself. There was no point where it seemed like he was making a genuine mission log for Star Control. Everyone was just playing off like he was making it for himself. And that's weird. That's another weird thing. I don't know why they did that. It's just all a bit weird. I want to know what you guys think. I want to know if I'm wrong. If I am wrong, I'll take it on the chin. I don't think I'm wrong. I feel like they could have done things very differently. And like I said, the buzz that we got was was the end buzz or, or no buzz. And I just don't know where that lies. I feel like he should have been competent and should have been up to our mates if it was the buzz from the end of Lightyear. But it's not. It's a very arrogant, very self-centered and very loner buzz that we had. So I don't know how to how to I don't know I don't I don't know how to feel about it it's very much I'm I'm stuck on this loop of were they right to do what they did or did they mess things up I'm more leaning towards they mess things up but I'm gonna let you guys jump in on the conversation let's all decide together whether or not this was a good movie or whether or not they made some real big mistakes but for now I'm gonna leave it there Ladies and gentlemen, go and have yourselves a wonderful evening. Like the video if you like the video and subscribe so that you enter yourself into the competition for Pokemon Scarlet or Violet over in, New, uh, in November. I could say over in New York then. And also just to keep up to date with everything that we're doing on the channel. Guys, go and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful evening and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. If you enjoyed that video, why not subscribe? If you enjoyed that video, why not subscribe? It'll help me and Natty continue to do the work that we're doing, and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Thanks!